This man has always been an icon, with a lot of controversial allegations surrounding him. How does a boy with a voice like that, that had the records that he had, that could have easily transformed into one of the greatest male vocals of all time, end up shooting himself for d It was wrong. Yeah. It was wrong as He was a young kid who came into the business. His family depended on him for income to live. He was the family business. This is Tevin Campbell's tragic truth. They still see me as a child star, so that's one of the cons of being a child star. If you grew up in the 90s or were around during that time, chances are you've heard of Tevin Campbell. Even if the name doesn't ring a bell, you've probably grooved to some of his hits like Can We Talk, I'm Ready, and Always In My Heart. Tevin's journey into music started like many other talented singers singing in church. He began in the choir and eventually became a soloist at Joshua Chapel in a small town south of Dallas, Texas. Recognizing his talent, Tevin's mother encouraged him to audition for jazz flutist Bobby Humphrey, which opened doors for him to meet Warner Bros. executives. They knew that they had this kid who could sing, and I think that people thought of me as this young kid who had this incredible voice. I don't think that, uh, I don't think the symbol thing worked. Before long, Tevin found himself collaborating with none other than Quincy Jones. His debut single, Tomorrow, A Better You, Better Me, was featured on Jones's album Back on the Block in 1990 and topped the Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop singles chart in June of the same year. Over the years, Tevin worked with renowned producers like Al B, Sure Babyface, and Narada Michael Walden, creating more hits such as Round and Round, Tell Me What You Want Me To Do, Alone With You, and Goodbye. His first album, T-E-V-I-N, dropped in November 1991, reaching number five on the top R&B hip-hop albums chart and eventually earning platinum certification from the RIAA for selling over a million copies in the United States. Tevin also showed off his acting chops, appearing in Prince's movie Graffiti Bridge and the popular sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. For his next album, Tevin aimed to prove he was maturing. In 1993, he dropped I'm Ready. He explained to Billboard magazine that the album reflected his personal growth over the past few years. I'm Ready wasn't just about catchy tunes, it was about showcasing his evolution as a person since his debut album. The album spawned three major hits, I'm Ready, Can We Talk, and Always In My Heart, all of which climbed the charts in both the U.S. hot and R&B categories. With over two million copies sold, I'm Ready achieved double platinum status. By the age of 16, Tevin Campbell had already released two successful albums and numerous hit singles. He also earned multiple Grammy Award nominations, including nods for Best Male R&B Vocal Performance and Best R&B Album. In the mid-90s, Tevin Campbell was riding high on his early success. By the age of 16, he had accomplished what many singers only dream of achieving in their entire careers. In 1996, Tevin dropped his third studio album, Back to the World. However, unlike his first two albums, Back to the World only reached gold status. It didn't perform well on either the Billboard 200 or the R&B charts. So, what led to this decline? after such a promising start. Some suggest that homophobia played a significant role, overshadowing his talent and the quality of his music. Rumors began to circulate about Tevin's sex when the music video for the single Back to the World was released. The video, featuring a 70s theme, showed Tevin dressed in vibrant colors with a braided bob haircut. When Tevin dropped his self-titled fourth album in 1999, it seemed like the buzz surrounding the talented singer had largely faded. Only one single from the album, Another Way, managed to make it onto the Billboard Hot 100. Unfortunately, 1999 turned out to be a tough year for Tevin in more ways than one. In addition to the disappointment of his album's performance, he faced legal trouble. Tevin was arrested for allegedly soliciting a lewd act from an undercover police officer during a sting operation in Van Nuys, California. This operation targeted areas near elementary schools where complaints of solicitation had been reported. Along with this charge, Tevin was found in possession of small amounts of 
according to police reports. He was fined $1,080 and ordered to attend Narcotics Anonymous meetings and an AIDS awareness class. Following this tumultuous period, Tevin took a hiatus from the spotlight, staying out of public view in the following year. Although he wasn't actively recording new music, he did release a compilation album titled The Best of Tevin Campbell in 2001. He also embarked on some international tours in 2002. In 2003, many within the LGBTQ community believe Tevin's career took a fatal hit due to a single interview. At 26 years old, Tevin spoke to Sister 2, Sister Magazine. During the interview, the topic of his sex arose. Tevin responded by stating, I'm not but there are a lot of different things that I do like. S. Actually, being in the business, you are introduced to a lot of different things. I'm not but I'm a freak, and I think a lot of people know what a freak is. The interviewer pressed further, asking, I'm not exclusively attracted to men. I'm not gay, but during that era, mentioning homosexual especially for an R&B star, was seen as career-ending. This was before figures like Frank Ocean and Mae Conan brought more acceptance to the industry. Following the interview, Tevin virtually vanished from the music scene. In 2005, he reappeared in a role for the Broadway musical Hairspray, but didn't release any new music until 2008. In May 2008, Tevin released an internet album titled 2008, Never Before Heard. It featured material recorded back in 2002 and was available on platforms like iTunes and Amazon. However, the album was swiftly pulled from circulation shortly after its release. So, did Tevin Campbell stage a comeback? In 2009, he made a notable appearance at the BET Awards, paying tribute to the OJs. The following year, he was featured on a remake of the song Secret Garden, alongside artists like Robin Thicke, Tyrese, LL Cool J, and Barry White. These moves suggested Tevin might be easing back into the music scene. From 2011 to 2014, Tevin popped up at various events and performed at arenas worldwide. His most significant comeback moments occurred in New York and New Orleans in 2014, when he wowed audiences at B.B. King's Blues Club and Grill and the Essence Music Festival. Both performances earned rave reviews, and it was announced that Tevin was working on a new album. While he did release a single, Safer on the Ground, a full album has yet to materialize. In 2018, Tevin's name was suggested as a potential tribute singer for the late Aretha Franklin. When author Luvi Ajayi questioned this suggestion on Twitter, she faced backlash, with fans and even celebrities defending Tevin's talent. Moved by the support, director Ava DuVernay offered Tevin a role in her popular show Queen Sugar. Tevin was deeply touched by the gesture and the unwavering support of his loyal fans. True to her word, Ava cast Tevin in season four of Queen Sugar. In 2018, Quincy Jones sparked controversy online when he candidly discussed various entertainment figures in an interview, spilling a lot of information. This led to a frenzy on the internet, with users digging up more details about the legendary music producer. One long-standing rumor that resurfaced after the interview was the suggestion that Quincy Jones had Emstead R&B singer Tevin Campbell when Campbell was still underage. Campbell, whom Jones praised as underrated, in the interview, took to Twitter to address the rumors. Responding to the claims, Campbell tweeted, Now I'm trending. Folks will really say some disgusting things. Tevin was m stead by Quincy, GTFOH with the devil. Campbell also shared a quote from Jones, God is pushing the bad in our face to make us fight back. In the same interview, Jones made controversial statements such as calling the Beatles the worst musicians in the world, revealing he dated Ivanka Trump 12 years ago, and claiming that Marlon Brando had relationships with other male entertainers like James Baldwin and Richard Pryor. Pryor's widow, Jennifer, confirmed Jones's claim about Brando, stating that her husband would have no shame in Jones's comments. However, Pryor's daughter refuted this statement. In 2020, Jaguar Wright did an interview that could have brought her some serious legal trouble. In an interview with Real Life Productions, she claimed that 90s singer Tevin Campbell was once us worker in Los Angeles, California. How does a boy with a voice like that, that had the records that he had, that could have easily transformed into one of the greatest male vocalists of all time, end up up tooting himself for and change on Hollywood Boulevard? 
How does that happen with a gift like his? Wright said. Once the Can We Talk singer became aware of her allegations, he took to Twitter to address her claims about his past. In now-deleted tweets that were posted by the Jasmine brand, Campbell accusing Wright of defaming his character and threatened to take legal action against her. According to A.J. Guayar Wright, I was a S-worker on Hollywood Bluffed, he tweeted. It's called online defamation. Do not test T.E. Vine. My lawyer is on deck. I would take that YouTube vid down if I were you. My past is well documented and I've learned from it and I own it. I will not tolerate anyone telling lies about me online. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for any did thing God don't like ugly and ain't too crazy about pretty. He also said that he reported the video. YouTube video by Jaguar Wright reported. Still, let's pray for her. Seems like she could use some positive energy in her life. Despite much speculation over the years, Tevin Campbell has largely kept his personal life out of the public eye. Earlier this year, he responded to a question from a Twitter user about famous singers who are rumored to be gay. He simply tweeted, Tevin is, along with a rainbow emoji. It was a casual thing for me, Campbell says, of what many took as a coming out statement. In truth, he adds, I love my fans, but what they think about my sex is of no importance to me. Asked his thoughts on the recent success of young queer black stars like Frank Ocean and Lil Nace X, who've opened up to fans. It wasn't like that in the 90s, he says with laugh, but I'm glad I get to see it. I'm glad that's changing. There are a lot of kids, especially young black boys, that need to see representation. He adds, they're not being taught to love themselves because of who they are. For Campbell, his greatest achievement is learning to love himself. Despite the challenges faced by many child stars, he's grateful for his journey and the fact that he's embraced his true self. With new music in the works and recent performances at prestigious events, such as the National Museum of African American Music in Nashville, Campbell must be content with where he is in life and proud of the progress he's made. Recently, R&B group One More has returned with their latest single, Alone With You. Released through Mary J. Blige's Beautiful Life Productions, this smooth track is a faithful rendition of Tevin Campbell's 1991 classic from his debut album, T-E-V-I-N One More's version of the song, originally penned by Albie Shore and Kyle West, was co-produced by Blige, Third Cider Beats, Aiden Brody, Angelo Doc Velasquez, Pat Kelly, and Will Campbell. Albie Shore produced the original version. Blige teased the cover on Valentine's Day through an Instagram post, receiving approval from both Tevin Camp saying and Albie Shore. Great job, fellas. Albie Shore, receiving approval from both Tevin Campbell, revealing its significance in his collaboration with Tevin Campbell. Alone with you marks Juan Moore's second release of 2024, following their earlier single, Baby in February. The group ended 2023 with a notable rendition of Boys Two Men's Please Don't Go, also produced by Blige. Last spring, Juan Moore debuted their self-titled EP, featuring standout tracks like Must Be Love and Mine. While Juan Moore hasn't unveiled details about their next project, their consistent delivery of quality releases continues to build anticipation for what they'll bring next. More Tevin Campbell, hopefully. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.